let us now study how to add annotations to the entity models that have been generated by the EDM for us. These annotations will help us add validation support and uh, it's a good idea to always add annotations. So let us first of all locate where we have to add annotations. Since we are going to store data uh, for our registration form, our annotations have to be applied to the TBL registrations. So let us locate that table first. This is our solution explorer and uh, we added annotations to this. Open and uh, this is what it actually looks like. This is our EDMX. Under EDMX, you will find mod registration.tt and uh, there you will find a table called TBL registration. Double click it and this is the table to which annotations have to be applied. These annotations will help us in validation, but there is an issue here. If you apply annotations inside this file, things will go wrong because this code is auto-generated which means as soon as you uh, compile this build rebuild whatever changes you make to this file they will be lost so this means things have to be done somewhere else See this, see this uh, warning at the top also. This code was generated from a template. Manual changes to this file may cause unexpected behavior in your application. So one thing is very clear that we can't apply annotations here. So for this, we have to use a special technique. So first of all, you can uh, see that uh, this TBL registration has been marked as a partial class. Entity Framework knows this. That somebody might have to add something to this or may apply some annotations to this. So Entity Framework know th knows this already. That is why it has already marked this as public partial. So this means you can add a class by the same name somewhere else in your code and apply the annotations there. And those annotations will be automatically linked to this one. But there is a lot of caution that needs to be taken here. First of all, Whatever annotations you add and whatever partial class you add, your matching partial class should be in the same namespace. If it is not in the same namespace, then linking won't occur. So this is one thing. You can't add your partial class TBL registration in some other namespace. Then linking won't be possible. It would be treated as a separate class. So this is one thing. The second thing is that you have to use the MD suffix for naming your new class. MD stands for metadata and this suffix is a fairly standard suffix called MD suffix which we have to add for properly connecting our annotation class to this class. So we'll do that and let us see how. Let us start by adding a class. If we add that class to entity models then it will automatically fall in this namespace. 
it will automatically fall in this namespace because namespaces they are uh, they match with our folders MVC exercise it contains entity models and here you see already MVC exercise dot entity models so we can add a class to this namespace we can add a class to this one but if I try to add a class called TBL registration here then it will clash with this one at least the designer won't allow me to do that uh, for this I'll do one thing I'll create a class add class I'll just give it a temporary name TBL registration mod then I'll change it later on because if I try to add it here compiler will give me uh, Visual Studio will give me an error a file with the same name already exists so I'm just putting a temporary name TBL registration mod or TBL registration and you can say that looks more like uh, closer to annotation and click add so one thing is clear that this class has actually entered the same namespace so all I have to do is remove this one partial class so now my things become ok I can fold it off and begin to apply annotations so for this I have to add here meta data type this is a required step right click and resolve data annotations and I'll have to set this argument type of TPL registration MD so I have to put a TBL registration MD here this one is actually a nested class inside this one I have to add that class so this is the procedure for linking them otherwise linking doesn't occur so once you understand this process then apply it everywhere and it will start working so uh, here I write public uh, partial uh, public class TBL registration MD this is my TBL registration MD it has to be a nested class inside this public partial class TBL registration now I have to add properties to it so that annotations are possible what I'll do is I'll come back to my EDM uh, class that's already generated for me just make a smart copy come here and paste it now my only job is to set annotations if I see this one if I quickly see this one and also this one these classes do not participate because ID is auto generated and this is a TBL qualifications base a uh, additional link foreign key to the TBL qualifications table I won't need this one in my data entry these I can isolate I can straightway delete them or I can add an attribute here I'll add an attribute called scaffold column false this will prevent it from participating in the uh, scaffolding process scaffolding process is uh, automatically carrying the data from the form to your action methods HTTP post will be applied to an action method and the data from the form will be collected and posted to that if I write scaffold column false then it won't um, allow the communication of data it won't overload ID will be ignored 
table qualifications base will be ignored. So these qualific these columns won't simply participate in that process in the process of form submission. Now I'll tackle the others one by one. First one is that email ID should be the required field. So I'm marking it required. I can give any message here required or all whatever you can do. Then the second one is that it should match a regular expression and if it doesn't match it should give the error message email. This is a regular expression match. You can look up the internet for a regular expression for email address. Then next I'll have to add string length 50 so that it doesn't exceed 50 characters. Then I have to add data type, data type dot email address. This is required in case a browser supports HTML5. In that case, HTML5 support for the email ID will be automatically incorporated. Uh, that's not very reliable however. The most reliable is your regular expression and string length. Applying these on email ID, let us now go to tackle date of birth. As usual, uh, first of all, we'll add here these annotations. Uh, one is the required field, that it is required a compulsory one. The other is display format. We shall use the format as, uh, I'll write it here, 0, 6, SEP 2013. We shall use this format. So we have set data format string is dd triple m y y y. Data format string. So this is where you this is the way you have to specify it. Zero colon this way. Then we are saying apply format in edit mode so that in case it is in edit mode even in that mode this is the format that is treated as the input format. Invariably set it to true. For date to function properly you can include display format and required is of course there. Then we have added another uh, tricky thing remote validate birth date home. So what could this be? Actually we always want date of birth to stay within certain limits. Date of birth can't exceed uh, let us say 20 years from now or uh, can't exceed 5 years from now. So those sorts of validations are better handled at the server side. We could have included a support here for minimum date, maximum date that is possible. Theoretically it is possible. But practically it poses certain problems especially when you are working for dates in Indian format. Those they are more suitable for American format and all. So uh, here we are adding a server side validation. And why are we using remote? Remote is done here so that the server side validation can be done through JSON. It will be an AJAX based validation. Remote is a uh, annotation available to you. This will require resolution. You will have to click resolve using system.web.mbc system.web.mbc remote will call this function inside this controller. Later on we'll remember to add these two there. And then you can better understand. This we have added deliberately also. So that you can understand if something has to be done through JSON quickly. Then uh, this will be as good as client side validation. I want to explain it better. 
You must have sometimes seen websites where you are entering a user ID. And you will find available, whether it is available or not. A message starts appearing on the right side. Type something else, it is not available. What is actually happening is, is a remote call, Ajax based call to the server where it is checking whether this email ID is available or not. Page is not posted. It is occurring almost uh, in the background we can say through AJX. AJX plus JSON. So that is what we have added here. In case the user types a date that is not good, then we can immediately return him. Please retry. Type something else. So uh, this is the validations that we apply on date of birth. Now let us talk about validations to be applied on qualification. First of all, uh, you should see how qualification will be presented. Qualification will be presented as a drop down list. It will contain items like uh, BTEC. These will be drawn from the database. MTEC. But uh, uh, in generally in websites we always see that is default like uh, select appears at the top. If we want to show that then we must associate an empty value with this one. The value with BTEC would be capital B as we have stored those codes in the database. For MTEC the value would be mcar. Uh, M, B, we can put an empty uh, value for select. So if uh, the user doesn't make any selection, but uh, this one appears as select, then this will be treated as an empty entry. So without writing a lot of code, we can just write one line that qualification is a required field. Basically, it will check whether the value associated with the selection is empty or not. If it is empty, it will say it's required. So, type here, required. Nationality will be coming from a, a pair of radio buttons, Indian and non-Indian or others, whatever it is. So, the radio button is always selected. Either this will be selected or this one will be selected. So in this case we need not apply any validation to nationality. Uh, with this our validation is, uh, uh, annotations are very much in place. And uh, I'll just show you the code once again so that you can have a look at it. We added a class TBL registration. This class is a partial class to the one that is already generated by the designer. Inside it we added a public class called TBL registration MD. MD is a suffix which we will add for metadata. This is basically a trick, nothing else. Then you are writing metadata type, type of this one. Now don't forget to add this MD here. If you don't add this MD here, then none of your validations will work. Be careful about this one, and of course this one. The case has to match. That will be take. Uh, that will be checked by the compiler also. We added data type, string length, regular expression required for the email, and then we added required and remote and display format for the date of birth, and. Uh, required for qualification and scaffold false for the other two columns. So we'll close this with this now and in the next lecture we'll proceed on the further parts of this exercise. Thanks.